Five, four, three, two, one. Um, um, um. Let's see. Um. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Hold me like the river Jordan. Some of them doing I don't know any of that song. I don't know any of that song. Is that again? <laughs> Free Willy. <laughs> is Free that Willy. <laughs> Come and jump over me <laughs> while I stand there. <laughs> yeah. Put out my hands and get wet a bit. I got a ponytail. It's a lit. All right. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the No Changes Podcast. I'm Tim Shot the Rock Suit. <laughs> I'm Free Willy Shucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Nikki Blade. <laughs> yeah. That's there are no lyrics to that song. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now you guys can't say I didn't know the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody. I, I knew right away he did not know his lyrics. We we learned that River Jordan part <laughs> because we would get stuck after holding me. <laughs> And then we didn't bother. I was just going to say, you're lucky you got River Jordan. (laughs) I still don't know what that means. Hold me like the River Jordan, dog. I guess. Uh, Well, shit. Um, Hi. What's up? (laughs) (laughs) How you guys doing? Maybe our guest will know. I feel like he will know. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe. The rest of the lyrics to that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he's definitely. What's the hook? Um, Oh. <laughs> Wait, there is no hook. No, there has to be a hook. Uh, oh, uh, no, there's no hook. There's no it's just, hook? Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's no hook. Okay, we win. Well, shit. Okay, shout out to it's humming. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Free Willy. Shout out to w- Willy. Um, shout out <laughs> to Wales. Shout, in it. <laughs> yeah, shout out to shout out to Will Smith and Free Willy Willy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, a do- that's a dolphin noise. <laughs> They're the background dance. <laughs> oh man! Oh my goodness! <laughs> so many people have no idea what they any of this so is. You <laughs> so people, like, dog. this is how they're fucking starting. This <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. Really? Wow! Are... Okay, Nikki guys... didn't know the lyrics to this one either. Oh god! Oh shit! Wow. Okay, we're gonna have to play a clip of the song in this one. So. Nah, nope. fuck it. Fuck <laughs> it. Oh no. No, okay. you don't. Yeah. Damn. All and right. you know what? Fuck the band too. We just gonna bring our guests in. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get y'all back. We need to get y'all back. So we're gonna bring in the guests. Nah, right yeah, now. just because uh right. they here. <laughs> yeah, my, my guest right here, look, man, I've known this man for a very, 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 very long time. OG in the YouTube space. Um, gone viral many occasions. Um, you may know him for his Obama impression or his YouTube parodies or his, um, he also does a very funny, um, I don't know, man, a bunch of shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> make some noise for my boy, Alpha Cat, aka Iman Cross. Yeah. This is the you're worst. The, you're the goat at terrible intros. No, I, so it's, bad. I, I, I want, not on purpose. I want to be known, like, I like going into it and be like, uh, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> That is no, that too was, funny. That was real special. <laughs> I was outside the door like, <laughs> do I turn around now or do I walk in? He, he be funny sometimes, I guess. <laughs> I heard people laugh at him. Like, he got a few video. He got a few videos or something. <gasps> What's up, dog? Uh, I'm chilling, bro. Uh, we are out here in these uh, COVID streets. You know, it's crazy out here. Yeah, it's crazy out here. How are you doing uh, mentally? How are you coping with the COVID? I'm good. And matter of fact, you said that, you know, I've gone viral a few times. I've gone viral again because now I have COVID. Surprise. Oh. Oh, wow. cool. Thanks a lot. Oh, good to know. You're going to see a murderer <laughs> on film, guys. I'm going to kill him right now. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm good. I'm good. Mental state's good. I've been a, an introvert, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of used to being inside. Yeah. Oddly enough, me being in this situation has made me want to make an effort to be more social. Really? After this is done. 
<laughs> after this is at done. some point yeah. yeah 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 you know you know you you bring that up and um and and i remember a lot of people like thinking they were introverts mm. until they were forced to really be inside yeah and then being like you know what i was wrong about myself i miss people i miss being around people um and like for me dog i have been great with the lockdown you know what i'm saying like yeah i do miss the occasional like like i yeah i i like being around people when i'm when i'm when i am around people i enjoy it right mm, like any yeah. any like function or or party or, or club for the most part when i'm when i'm with people i enjoy it but i don't necessarily like i'm not like ah oh, man I, I i need to to see some people right yeah, now you right, know what i'm right. saying i've been kind of chilling yeah same same yeah. Yeah. yeah same 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 old same old but um so, you know, as I said, you are a YouTube OG. Mm -hmm. I've known you for a very long ass time. A long ass time. Long ass time. Probably like, I want to say like, oh, seven. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, I'm bad with recalling dates, but that sounds about right. Well, I, I gauge it off of, I started YouTube in around 05, 06. And then so I probably was doing it for a couple of years before I started actually like, you know, talking to people. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, I remember, you know. Before you even started doing the Obama shit heavy, it was like you did the uh, sneeze while I pee video. Oh, God. Um, you went way back. I'm trying to show you my history. You guys. went way back. I, I, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Sneeze while I pee was actually my first like viral video. Yeah. And at the time it was viral, like, oh, 7,000 views. You know, it was like <laughs> the early days of YouTube, you know, when it was just, it was quite different. But yeah. That's why that's why I know that's why I feel like a lot of the OG YouTubers were so like we kind of know about each other's shit because you know not only were we were there not a lot of us on the platform mm. but we were like constantly checking like what's on the most viewed list you right. know what I'm saying what's what's popping right now it's trending that's how I you know came across your stuff mm. um when did you um well I mean tell us about tell us about your your experience as a uh, as a OG YouTuber <laughs> <laughs> how did you get into it uh, um just because, you know, I'd, I'd always been, I'd always wanted to be an actor, grew up in a performing arts school, studied, you know, acting and musical theater and visual arts. And I was a drummer at one point and da dancing, like I just did everything. And like, I wanted to be an actor mostly and direct and shoot. And so um, my, my ex at the time, this is like 2000 and God, uh, around 2005, mm -hmm. she bought me my first camera and it was just like this little mini joint you can get at Rite Aid for like 15 bucks. Mm. And it was probably like 240p at the time. Was oh, like, shit. was like the big resolution. But yeah. anyway, I just started just shooting stuff and um, got a lot of critic criticism. People were like, you know, this is what you do with your spare time. Da, 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 you know, <laughs> that was always a thing, right? Like, that was always a thing. Dude, get a day job. Get a real, get a real job. <laughs> this is what you do. And I'm like, I'm just having fun. And then that it just kind of just spiraled from there. I just started just doing comedy videos, and it's, I kind of started off doing um, kind of not vlogging, but storytelling. Right. Just telling stories about all like terrible dates and mm -hmm. this kind of situation that kind of situation so that's where it started and it just kind of snowballed from there when did the uh, obama shit come into play um late 2008 he was running it was right before he started run well no it was as he was running for president and i was working at a restaurant in union square in new york city someone was like hey obama come take my drink order uh, close to that a, co <laughs> a, a, a co-worker was like i walk into work and this co-worker was like oh here comes obama and everyone started laughing at the time i didn't really know who he was but he was on the tv in the restaurant ah. so i look up and i'm like Oh, I get it. It's funny. We look alike because I'm the only black guy who works here. So <laughs> it's like, shit. yeah. But I had a, I had a thought. I'm like, you know, I could, I didn't, I don't, like, I was like, I don't do impressions, but what if, it looks like he's going to win. And if I work on an impression of this guy early before mm -hmm. anything else starts, if I can kind of corner that market, maybe that can help me get some steam for my, for my acting career. Mm -hmm. So that night I went home, took out my little server booklet, and I just like wrote down a little whatever script, and I started watching CNN clips to see how he talked. Mm -hmm. And our voices were like already a little bit, in like a similar register so it wasn't yeah. too hard for me to find the impression uploaded it and then that video that very first one just did crazy num well crazy numbers for me at that time mm -hmm. back in 2008 and I was so like, like okay. eight thousand people. yeah it was like <laughs> eight thousand and one <laughs> so i just kept doing those and working and it just it just blew up from there yeah you know what i liked i always liked uh your parodies man because i feel like a lot of people you know they'll write a parody <laughs> but they don't pay attention to the the original song at yeah. all you right. feel me yeah like you you have always been very meticulous about uh pairing up your parody lyrics to the original lyrics you know what mm. i'm saying which is something i always tried to do too some people will just like 
Man, say whatever. Say whatever the yeah, fuck. Yeah, on the same it's, beat. Yeah. It's got to hit the same cadences. If I can even find similar words to yeah. rhyme with the same parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because people already have the melody and the words in their head. So if you can get them as close to that as possible, you know. Yeah. And I actually I haven't done a parody in so long. I miss doing parodies. I miss them a lot. I'm just, I've got that weird thing going on right now where I've been in the game, in social media game for so long. Yeah. I've got this, a little bit of a weird stage fright where it's like, mm. you know what I mean? It's like yeah. I stopped for a long time. And then I'm looking at it now and wanting to do it. And I'm like looking at the new kids. I'm like, yo, the new shit's just crazy. Like everyone's just doing so much stuff. And yeah. But I do miss doing musical comedy. Like mm-hmm. I miss it a lot. So I might have to hop, like hop back in it. Hey, man, I miss it too, bro. I miss it too because, you know, parodies were kind of the thing yeah. on YouTube. If you could do a good parody like forever. Right. A good parody will mm-hmm. work if it's good. We don't even necessarily need to go all out with the videos like we feel pressured to back then. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like now it's like, uh, you know, with all the different ways to put it out there, right. you just got to, you know, as long as it's funny. It'll, I mean, we all can't be Bart Baker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> Bart's hilarious. Bart's hilarious. No, no, Bart's good. He's in China killing it right now, apparently. What's he doing in China? You didn't know that? No. Okay, I, I just, okay so Nikki Blades. Bart Baker is this guy that... I just stopped laughing. I was like, hold oh, on. I don't know what the hell was going <laughs> Bart on. Bart Baker is this guy that... Uh, he, his, his main thing was he used to do these... Uh, these, these, uh, these musical parodies, these YouTube videos, right? Mm. And um, they would get a lot, a lot of views. Mm. And so now... And I don't know how real this is. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. He lives in China, and I guess he's popping for doing English translations of Chinese songs, but he sings them the same way the Chinese songs are sung. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he has this. Apparently, he has like a huge audience in China. As well. Like he he lives in fucking China right now. Yeah. A weird flex, but okay. Yeah, and uh, he's been out there for like a couple of years now. Okay. And every so often, he'll post on Instagram of him like performing at some huge Chinese event. Oh, That's crazy. so random. And them like holding signs of his face and shit. That's so random. But hey, good for him. You know, hey, find your niche, do your thing. So how have you? Uh, speaking of you know doing your thing uh, after all these years, how have you uh, navigated the the entertainment waters from you know I feel like being known as this kind of YouTube mm. personality. So I know you want to like you know be like an, you're like you you want you're an actor. You right. know what I'm saying, and you want to do that stuff. Like how have you been navigating those waters? Um, pretty much as it comes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think luckily what I was afraid of when the Obama thing ended was that no one being able to see anything but Obama. Mm-hmm. But the reality is I don't really look like Obama, like truth be told. Right. Like I do the makeup and the look and the impression and you know, whatever. But walking down the street, I don't get people that go like, man, you, you ever been told you look like <laughs> Obama? Like I never get that, thankfully. Like I've seen other Obama impressionists that really, really, I mean like facially at least, they look like the guy. Mm-hmm. So I don't run into that when I go into rooms. Um, but I've been, you know, doing film. Um, I've done a lot of web series. I'm currently voicing Ob- uh, voicing Obama for this show <laughs> called Cartoon President on Showtime. Oh yeah, I saw that. Very writ- cool. Written by Stephen Colbert, or produced by Stephen Colbert. Um, and we're going into our fourth se- season with that. And we actually just did a musical number a few days ago. We're doing like quarantine voiceover, so I'm recording it all at home as they just patch in and just give me notes and whatever. Um, so just as it comes, but now with the weird thing is right before COVID hit, I was in like this dope space of just like booking a bunch of stuff, got new agents and everything was just like heating up and then boom, everything shut down. Mm. So right now it's just a matter of looking at things of not only waiting things out, but also I guess kind of adapting to what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. So that's where I then started thinking like, you know what, podcasts are really popular. Um, I do love to talk. So kind of toying with that now, just started and got one little episode out. Um, But I'm just kind of rolling with the punches as they come. Because right now, like everything is so uncertain. Yeah. Um, So yeah. Well, let me tell you, bro, you're looking fit. Oh, thank you, sir. You're looking, you're, thank you, sir. you're, you're looking, uh, fit. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. No, I'm, I'm, I'm down probably about from my heaviest. I'm probably down about 30 to 40 pounds. Word? Wow. Yeah. Oh shit. But that's, I mean, that's just, it's a few different things. As you know, I used to be a big boozer, a very, <laughs> a very big boozer. Well, I didn't know it was big like that, but yeah. Yeah. Like I drank, I had to quit. So it's, I've been six years now not drinking. Oh shit. Wow. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Congrats, you. Congrats, man. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Right? It, it doesn't. No, no, leave it. Leave it. No, no, leave it. <laughs> no, she's, it about to, she's about to take a swig. You got her in the mood. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's the story doing? Um, and then, like, like, you know, diet changes. I went vegan based. I'm like 90% vegan. 
Where? Um, and just exercising more and just, you know, watching myself. I just wanted to be in better shape. I feel you. Was there any specific thing that made you want to be like, I need to get in shape or just because? Honestly, well, just my own personal health, but then also to acting. Mm. Like I'm just looking around. I'm like everyone that's booking the roles that I'd like to get mm. are in like crazy shape. I would go into these audition rooms and I'm seeing guys that were like <laughs> on on an acting level. It's like, oh, I, I got this guy. No problem. Mm -hmm. But that person would be in way better shape. Right. And I never forget once I did this audition and it was supposed to be this like I always get called in for like the guy next door, you know, <laughs> which is weird for me because I'm not used to that, you know, but okay. I get called in for this role and there was supposed to be a, a love scene. And mm -hmm. in the script, it said um, they make out. He takes off his shirt. She gets stuck looking at his his eight pack abs. Ah. <laughs> You were like, <laughs> like y'all were going to supply the app. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much time do we have for this role? <laughs> yeah. So I did the did the audition, killed it, and it was two ladies. And like I always love when there's um, when there's uh, women in the room because it's just kind of easier to connect with them and, and win them over. Whereas the guys are just kind of be you can tell they're watching you but hating a little bit. <laughs> and they like you you're amazing, you're so charming. Okay, let's do it one more time. And this time uh, go and take your shirt off so we can. Oh! So we can, and I was just like, huh. I'm, <laughs> What, what was that? She was like, no, just take your shirt off because we have to see, like, you know, we have to feel the moment. Ah. I was like, shit. So I did the same thing, killed all the lines, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see, you can just feel the, you can just see the expressions kind of go like, oh, okay. <laughs> and it was like one of those moments I'm like, okay, I need to start, I, need, I have to pick it up a little bit. Not that you can't, not that you have to be all ripped up to be, you know, a successful leading man, but for me, I felt like it was just... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there have been there have been men and women of all body shapes and sizes that like have pioneered and 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 killed lead roles. Of course, but I just felt like for what I was being called in for, it just yeah. made the most sense. And for myself, I just wanted to be in better shape. No, nah, man, I completely feel that because I'll watch shit where I'm like, I would have killed this part, but I'd be looking like this motherfucker's cheekbones are are <laughs> cheeking, oh, cheeking so real hard. So, so you're so bad boys. I've <laughs> seen all them shits, bro. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Hey, hey, do you guys like having sex? I know I do. It's pretty sweet, especially since, you know, we ain't going nowhere during these crazy times. And I don't know about you, but I would love to last longer and go extra rounds. That's why your boy likes popping the occasional blue chew, okay? If you like sex, you'll love bluechew.com, all right? At bluechew.com, you can get the first chewables with the active ingredients, sildenafil or tadalafil, the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. And guess what? Chewables can work faster than pills, up to twice as fast, okay? No in-person doctor visit, no awkward conversations, no waiting line at a pharmacy. It ships directly to your door in discreet packaging, all right? And, uh, you know, your boy pops the occasional blue chew because even though, you know, even though I, I, I lay down the pipe sometimes after that first layeth downeth of the pipeeth I'll be ready to sleepeth right but blue chew will get me right back ready to layeth it downeth oneeth againeth okay and just for y'all I got a special treat okay visit bluechew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code Tim just pay five dollars shipping that's b l u e chew.com promo code Tim hey, hey hey you know what it's the perfect time to pick up a new skill learn some new information. The world is having all types of conversations and it's the best time to really learn some new shit, okay? That's why I F with Skillshare because Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative people like myself and for like you guys watching at home, okay? Skillshare offers all types of creative classes that you can apply to your everyday life. Now, some of my personal favorites are, uh, let's see, they got that uh, filmmaking from home, turn found footage into a compelling video by Penny Lane, and you got design grades stuff, how to make merch with Draplin, taught by Aaron Draplin. Now stuff like that is dope because you can apply it to your everyday life. Now that we're home, you can turn that random footage you got into a dope YouTube video or you can turn your creative ideas into some merch and make some money. Skillshare is incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month and Skillshare has classes to fit your schedule and skill level, okay? And just for y'all, I got a special deal. Explore your creativity and get two free months of premium membership at Skillshare. Skillshare.com slash no chaser. That's two whole months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. Get started and join today by heading to Skillshare.com slash no chaser. When uh, I was on my first season of Wildin' Out, right? Mm. I remember feeling like I'm in good shape right now, right? And then I watched the episode. I'm like, I'm fucking fat. <laughs> What what the heck? <laughs> like, what the, it's like that whole shit about the cameras is real. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until I lost like 
20 pounds going into another season mm. and being borderline too skinny in person mm. but on tv i was like i look great yeah, yeah. and gotcha. that's the that's the the rub it's weird you know yeah. it's really it's really weird yeah so it's like uh and it, and it sucks you know you'll see these like these women on tv where you're like oh wow they look beautiful right and then you see them on the red carpet and you're like wow you are you need a sandwich <laughs> When you're shopping online, they always say what the model, like their stats. Mm -hmm. Be like 5'9", wearing an extra small. I said, what? Like 9, 7 pounds. I was like, <laughs> That's crazy. I, I look at them like we're the same height and there's no fucking way. Yeah. I would stand next to her and look ridiculous. Yeah. But in real life, it's just, just not the Are you 5'9"? Yeah. Okay. I'll talk I, to you. 6'2"? Uh, oh. I think that might be. Sh <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. well, Mr. 6'2, I just learned something new about you that I didn't know, and I never would have pegged you for this. Okay. I didn't know you were a B A C P B, black and can't play basketball. Oh. What the hell? <laughs> Not at all. I, I am a complete and utter waste of six foot two. Ah, uh, when did you learn this? He posted something on Instagram the other day. I, was I like, what the fuck? I am a thespian. I cannot play basketball. Oh, so you like girls. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you know now we get somewhere. <laughs> Cats out the bag, <laughs> you know. No, I yeah, I cannot. I've never been athletic like that. I do like like I love boxing, mm. and if I could do it, like like training MMA just for exercise, but as a like a career move or like basketball for like never. It's just never been in me. I hated gym in school. I Here, hated it. Here's here's a here's a surprise for you. Also, I also can't play basketball. <laughs> What? <laughs> well, Pre preposterous. Motherfuckers <laughs> just be trying to go in there. Right. Go in there lying. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a good swimmer. Can you swim? Yeah, I can swim. You can swim. See, I'm not a good swimmer. And I, I, people would make me feel bad about that <laughs> until recently I found out that Will Smith is also not a good swimmer. And I was like, yes. I don't think Jay-Z can swim. Really? Yeah. Well, he was a drug dealer. Yeah. <laughs> so that makes him cool. He wasn't, he wasn't hitting the community pool. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but then there was that picture of Jay Z diving into the right. water all weird. They don't know. I think that, and I think that was actually his first time in the ocean. What? Yeah, because he said it in one of his bars, and I was like, "Oh, that's why that shit looks so awkward." Like, and he's on the the, the jet, jet ski, ski with the yeah. helmet, and like, and a, and a life jacket. Yeah. Speaking of bars, you be spitting some bars sometimes. You ever I thought try. about really doing that? No, I mean, yes, I have thought about it, but I wouldn't dare. Not why? Because I don't want to be the guy who's trying to pursue a rap career at forty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, no chance, did it? Yeah, yeah but. But I, you know, and, and here's the thing. I have a mic at home in my own little home studio, whatever, mm -hmm. really, you know, makeshift. And I often record shit a lot and I just never share it. Really? Like I did a whole like, you know, Black Lives Matter, you know, mm. kind of like racism diss. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was so far up to now, probably one of the better things that I've done in terms of like actual rapping. And I'm, I've been too like timid to like put it out because I'm just like. I have that thought of like, oh, who wants to hear you like trying to spit some bars, at, you know, at your age and like, I, I don't know. I might throw it up anyway. Well, check this out, bro. I got a fire idea for you. I just came up with right now. Okay. Okay. You could totally do an album, but lean into the fact that that that's how you feel. Like I'm a 40 year old and yeah, I'm a right. tribe like a rapper. So then, then you can rap about shit like I'm tired. Right. <laughs> I don't want to go out. And that's the thing is when I think about doing it seriously, seriously, I'm like the only angle I could take that would make me feel okay with it is if I got to, I got to infuse some joke. I got to kind of make it a little bit of a joke and let people go, wait, he's, he's spitting up. Right. And just right. make it a joke, but I'm going to be spitting, you know, yeah. like that's the only way I could really pull that off. I think. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah, there's a whole stigma of like when you're a rapper, it's like, you got to be serious. You know right. what I'm saying? You can't, you know, if you like, like, like Lil Dicky, people still don't take him seriously as a rapper. Like some people, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Some people are like, oh, that's the, that's a joke rapper. Mm. But Lil Dicky's crazy. You yeah, know, he can nah, spit. I he mean, can spit. They, they say that until he raps. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, oh, oh. Mm. You yeah, no, he can, he can definitely spit yeah. for sure. Well, I had a 65 year old Uber driver play me his mixtape, <laughs> not making a joke. <laughs> he, How'd that go? he built up this one song. He's like, I ain't never heard nobody make a song like this about this topic, but it's like, super important people need to be talking about it and the hook was damn can i even tell his hook fuck it he not listening <laughs> <laughs> medicare medical medicaid i'm medicated it was about health insurance <laughs> but he spit what he knew yeah so i'm like if he can do that <laughs> yeah i mean you're right you're right well remember that homeless dude that came up to us in the parking lot and Compton, Compton, yeah. Compton, Compton. That shit was kind of hard. It was hard. <laughs> it, the whole hook was Compton. <laughs> yeah. Compton, like Compton, 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 Compton. And it just, okay. But his verse was hard. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, as long as you got a repetitive hook, it, yeah. it kills. Yeah. That's the other thing too, is that like when I do like when I do rap, I feel like I'm more on the old school like New York vibe mm. than the new age like just super repetitive trendy vibe. Like yeah. I want to say something old school. Yeah. Like- Jada Kiss. Yeah, I, I'm like, hoorah. Like, <laughs> my name is Apple Cat and No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. No, 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 not like that. Like, yeah, like some old Jada, Jada Kiss, mm. um, just like old New York rap battle vibes. Like, I like a lot of wordplay. So when I listen to it, I'm like, okay, yeah, the wordplay is cool. But then, uh, you know, the kids are into something different now. Oh, okay, so. well, then, yeah, maybe no. Because <laughs> Cassidy, he, he not. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. He, he got bars, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, now that you all fit and sexy and shit, bro, how's the uh, how's the dating life? Because you know, I've known you for so long. I, I've I've seen you kind of uh, go through different relationships. You know, <laughs> I, well, because here's the thing. No, I already told him I was gonna talk to him about this. Um, so unblasted. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why we're here. <laughs> this is the point. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, because you know, also, but you've also because you because you've also been in that world where it's like I'm vlogging like my relationship. You mm. feel me? Mm. So it's like as someone who's done that. And, um, and I know, you know, this, like, you know, like I said, I've known you just through different kind of like, uh, entanglements. Um, <laughs> we weren't entangled. It just, <laughs> yeah. we just know of entanglement. Yeah. Um, how, how's that, how's that going for you at this, at this juncture in your life? Oh, it, it's not, but that's, <laughs> that's by choice. Like I, um, I kind of hit a point where I just felt like, especially right now, there's just so much, like I wanted, like my life needed so much attention from me. Mm. And I just come out of a relationship, I think like last October. And after that, I was like, you know, I'm gonna take a second and just chill and focus on me. So that's what I've been doing. Um, it unfortunately hits a little different when you, and I hate to keep, you know, bringing up the age thing, but it, it hits a little different when you hit 40. Okay. It, like it just does. Cause it's like, normally when you're single, say, like, all right, I wanna have a little fun now, you know, just whatever. Mm. But now I'm in that weird space of like, I want to do that, but then I know where that goes. It's like, okay, I can have like a casual whatever with somebody, but then that always ends bad or gets weird at some point. Mm. So why do I want to waste that time? And then I, I don't want to date anybody because I know I'm not going to put forth the effort or energy to like really give a woman what she wants. So I'm not going to waste her time and I'm not going to mm-hmm. waste mine. So I kind of feel stuck in the middle right now. And I'm cool with just focusing on work. I feel you. And that's benefited me, you know, thus far. So. You know what's fucked up as a double standard? Because if you were a 40 year old woman mm-hmm. who just wanted to have fun and hook up, people would be like, ah, this cougar. Mm. It's cougar at the bars, but mm. you better handle that, right? But if you're a 40 year old uh, man cougar, right. then it's like, then it's like, oh, he's creepy, yeah. <laughs> right? Creepy panther over right. here, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think do they call them silver foxes or silver foxes older? I, it's it, way older. It, but way older. Oh, it's way it's, she's older. like, I know, I, I got this one. I was like, excuse me, guys, <laughs> it's my turn now. No, they're way, think Rick Fox. He's a silver fox. So what's 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 the equivalent of a cougar for a man? I mountain lion. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I, but isn't a silver fox just an attractive old a man? A really attractive old man. Yeah. I mean, if you're referring to yourself as a cougar, that means you're going, that's a woman that's younger. going after yeah. younger so, men. Uh, pervert would be the word <laughs> for men. That's terrible. I, I, mean, I don't that's, that's true. Okay, that's true. Right. but, but that's 40 true. is not old. It's For, not. 40 and dating anybody over the age of 18, you pushing it if you go in 18, right. but it's not as uncommon as you think. So 40 is still, you don't look 40. Not at all. It's not like some people, they look way older than what they are. Then you'll be like, why is he talking to that person? But if you were to go and date, I don't think you have a title for your age. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, like you're well, not no, in that yeah. realm yet. Yeah, no, no, yeah, totally. Only, I, only if you're specifically targeting younger, younger women. Yeah. Right. That just sound wrong right there. I, I feel like you said t- yeah, that targeting. Was, yeah. You, targeting. Sorry. You, if you wanted to date again, you would be so successful with that group of of, of young women, like twenty somethings, who think they're way more mature than they are, yeah. who only want to date older men. Right. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you would you would also do really good with the cougars. Cause you still look young, but you're not immature. Uh, it depends on the day. <laughs> the day. No, but I, most of my girlfriends have, or actually all of my girlfriends have been younger. And I, I attribute, attribute that to two things or one thing, really, I'm in a young industry yeah. and the younger girls, like the late twenties to like early thirties, that's younger for me, uh-huh. um, tend to just be way more forward. Right. Whereas yeah. if I, like, if I were to date someone who's at 40 or even older, um, at least in my experience, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like loopholes to get through before we can just chill and have fun mm. it's like i want to know your five ten year plan i want to do right, right. Criteria which, is different. which is fine but it's it's also 
sometimes a little overkill when it's like I'm just trying to just, yeah just so try to catch a vibe. to do with you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, hey, real quick, you know, uh, you know what I love? I love now learning how to cook a home cooked meal. You know, I never used to cook before, but that's why I f with Hello Fresh. Okay, y'all know Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut. Over 90% of ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure the freshest recipes are delivered to your door. Okay, um, Hello Fresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. You know, uh, it definitely saves me the trip to the grocery store. Shows up to our house every Sunday in a nice little box. Couple fire recipes that we can cook up. HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients means there's less prep for you and less food waste, okay? Now, we've been doing this like every week. Me and Chia, you know, we get that box. Um, she picks out what recipes we're gonna cook for the week and then, um, you know, sometimes she'll cook it, sometimes I'll cook it. When I feel like, you know, uh, being romantic, I might cook a little something up for her and it's actually nice for me, a dude who doesn't really cook ever breaks it down real easy, you know? Just for my no chaser peoples, I got a discount for you guys. Go to hellofresh.com slash 80nochaser and use code 80nochaser to get a total of $80 off, including free shipping on your first box, okay? Additional restrictions apply. Please visit hellofresh.com for more details. Depending if you have kids or not, I think that age kind of goes a little bit out the window with dating depending on if you have children. Mm -hmm. So like maturity levels are different. You're kind of looking that this is somebody potentially as like a parenting figure to my children so it's different but if you're 40 no kids and whoever you want to date like you're like i'm established i don't want to deal with the drama what are you into cool you got a good head on your shoulder looking to start a family what's your vibe all right this works and then you move forward right, right, right. but you're not looking you're chilling i'm chilling i'm cool I'm oh cool. yeah you told me you were a celibate Oh yeah, that's yeah, what you yeah. told me. I was like, we gotta, we gotta talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you sell a bit, like all the way, sell a bit. Uh, sell a little bit here, sell a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> where you, se where are you selling it at? <laughs> no, just I mean, since my last relationship, I decided to just kind of stop for a second. Um, just yes, yeah, so I just been chilling. But you still like? But I'm at the point right now. <laughs> It's questioning everything. I what you mean. So what else? Wait. How are you really feeling, Tim? <laughs> Wait, well, finish your thought first. Um, but I, I feel like right now I'm hitting the point where I'm kind of like, like my primal side is like, okay, nigga, look. Word. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're being all righteous, but listen. Uh, yeah, go get a massage or something. Yeah, gonna... <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Right, right, right. right. So. I was going to say, you still like jerking off and shit though, right? Yeah. <laughs> like... yeah oh, all God. the time, all the time. Tim's right so confused came, right now. <laughs> Like, like how yeah. <laughs> like you got it yeah no you have to yeah you have to but you know just it's like, so wait where where do you leave your dick then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just, just put, put it in a drawer I put it in the refrigerator <laughs> yeah. in the house okay so check this out oh oh check this out okay right? so you're celibate for just because you want to like you know focus on life and yourself and stuff right right let's say even though you're not dating or looking to date right you met uh a, a delightful woman Right. Okay. She's got to be delightful. Very delightful. Um, now, are you still trying to be celibate or are you like uh, open or, or you're like, OK, cool. Let's see where this goes. Or are you still like, nah, I'm going to be celibate. I'm focusing on this. You know, what I'm It really for me. OK, here's the thing. For me, it's really all about a vibe. Okay. It's all about energy. I've never been the guy that can just go out to meet a girl in the bar and take her home. I've never taken home a girl from a bar or a club, ever. Mm -hmm. It's really a vibe. And so there has to be chemistry. When the chemistry's right, it opens up everything else. So although I'm kind of retired, like I feel like I just don't want to do the casual thing, mm -hmm. that would be the that would actually make the most sense for me right now. Because I know I'm not about the right kind of things to <laughs> pursue a relationship. Right. Like I'm not gonna wanna have a girl blowing my phone up and ask me where I'm at and like <laughs> we have to have a date X amount of times this week and I gotta spend that bread on that. Like I don't have that my, my brain can't compute that right now. Yeah. So casual would make the most sense for me. But it's all about a vibe. Right now I'm not looking for that. If I come across somebody and she's like just magnificent and delightful. And delightful and I can see she's like got you know when someone looks at you and they have that certain interest and they're just like, yo, like what are you doing this week? What are you doing? You know, they, they want to, it's, there just has to be the right vibe. It can't be like, oh. You're not going on the date saying, by the way, just to let you know, I'm celibate. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to stay. Right. If you, if you leave, I understand. Like, yeah, no. So it just has to be a vibe. And like, if I met someone who had that right, like, chill vibe and it felt like it makes sense, I'd be game. Somebody gonna catch me slipping eventually. You'd be game. game. Yeah. I'd be, I, I would be game. <laughs> yeah. I would be game. Because you left Stop. the M out. Yeah. The first yeah. time. Yeah. 
It was just it was a so, soft M. So are you a thespian or not? <laughs> or are you game? <laughs> Make up your mind. That's it's okay. Went. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> say, he did say right I would person. be game. <laughs> I talk really fast and sometimes I slur. <laughs> I would be game. <laughs> okay, Mr. Gay Man. <laughs> I say game man, I think. <laughs> oh, All right, so how long have you been celibate? Uh, since since October. There's a little, see, I'm smirking because there's a little footnote to that. There's a footnote that I'm not going to get into. Okay. Oh, you what? like feet stuff. <laughs> ah, all right. Yeah, let's, man, let's create that scandal. <laughs> That's being feet or no? Yeah. Okay, so so let's say October. Okay. It's close what, to a year now, what, right? Without, yeah, without the yeah. footnote. Okay, let's say... September 15th, right? <laughs> Why that date? <laughs> you meet a chick. Uh-huh. She has the vibe, right? Uh-huh. But you're so close to a year. Ah. And you know you can smash mm. and it's going to be dope. She's not going to get weird. Mm-hmm. But you also know she don't live here. She's going back on her way afterwards. She don't live here, you say? Yeah. No, there will be nothing that comes out of this. Right. But the vibe is right. Mm. <laughs> Do you smash and not meet the year <laughs> even though a year is not in your mind but when you get that close to a year right. it's like shit i might as well do the year right knowing you get nothing else after that it's just a a, a dope vibed smash yeah i mean <laughs> i actually love that question because i think it's true like it's a weird thing but yeah in my head at this point it is it's a little bit like that it's like driving when you're on on like really low on E <laughs> and you see a gas station you're like yeah. I bet you I can make it to the next one though Yeah, like that's how I feel because it's not like and I'm not I, this is an awkward conversation for me but it's not, not like trying to be a braggart but it's like it's not like I don't have offers he can smash it if you want I could de- to no I definitely could but it's like I'm not trying to I don't want to have that regret afterwards of like yeah. oh, mm-hmm. I should have just waited a little bit longer yeah. Mm-hmm. but yeah I've been passing some gas stations and <laughs> I may pass a few more but it's just it's, it's, it's also a weird time the energy you get when you shut when you shut down, when you shut yourself down. Yeah. Cause it's like the moment I shut myself down, I'm seeing people come at me that I'm like, now you notice me. Yeah. Ah. I've like noticed I you for years. To fuck you. <laughs> like it's, it's been, yeah, it's been the, there's been some interesting offers, stuff that I, I'm, I'm personally not used, used to, but yeah, I, if it was cool, I mean, I'd be open to it, you know, a hundred percent. It's interesting because in my head, in my head I was like, you passing gas stations on full in this case. <laughs> <laughs> True. You are stronger than me, bro, because I feel like if I was in your situation, right, and then I had uh offers from like uh from women in the past who had like I'd wanted to and they were like, Okay, now they were like offering I I, I don't know if I'd be able to turn that down in that yeah. situation. You know yeah, no, saying? no, I feel you, I feel you. Yeah. Well, then would justify the shit out of it. No, no, that don't count. <laughs> that don't really count because that's yeah. like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, see, I was trying before. Yeah. So this isn't like I'm pursuing yeah. I'm giving, anything. No, it's like I gave past dick. <laughs> <laughs> do, uh, uh, do you feel like it helps you creatively? Like, I notice a lot of people, like what the no nut November thing that mm-hmm. a lot of people participate in. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you feel that it helps you with your craft by being focused on oh, you yeah. versus? No, for sure. Because like getting all hippie and stuff like I, in the, you know, in these recent years, I've gotten a lot more conscious, you know, I meditate a lot and like, I've you know, eat, try to try to eat, you know, really clean. But I do spend a lot of my private time like meditating and reading and like I do a lot more People reading. read. You too. <laughs> we were making fun of her for reading earlier. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> just telling her we don't. Read. <laughs> you read? I read. Silly. <laughs> no. You're like, well, I was. I was. Uh, and, just and let, let's that be up. clear. She tries to read. Keep right. going. No, but it's like, you know, so the thing is, sexual energy <laughs> is the same. <laughs> she tries to read. Sexual energy is, is also creative energy. Yeah. So when you shut off one, it does it does reroute your energy to other places. So it's allowed me to do more things like, like read or to uh, write scripts or work out or to you know focus on learning um things like what i'm doing now like learning the stock market learning fa- finance because i didn't grow up with um a lot of financial literacy man me at mm-hmm. all so i'm i'm like literally giving that to myself now i'm up every morning monday through friday 6 a.m with my people looking at the the pre-market studying stocks day trading medium trades you know so it's like i'm I'm giving myself a new skill. So in this time, that's part of the reason why I'm so focused. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing stuff that I'm watching is changing the life around me. Yeah. You know what? I can totally understand that because, you know, as somebody who like, when I started jerking off, just was jerking off so much. <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought it was you, about to go real deep. Yeah, no, it, 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 <laughs> it, it kind of is. Because you, you get to a point 
Um, also because society kind of tells you that you're supposed to just jerk off all the time, be horny all the time. Mm. You get to a point where you kind of feel like, um, am I, am I actually in control of this or not? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, um, where you tell yourself, nah, I'm supposed to just jack off every day because that's what like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm horny dude. I'm supposed to, but then it's like, <laughs> can I not? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. And I got to a point where I was like. I'm jerking off so much and I need to get other things done. Right. Where I was, there was like a summer where I was like, before I allow myself to bust my nut, I will go to the gym first and the nut bus will be the a reward. reward. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where I had to like condition myself. It was like, like delayed gratification. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm like, okay, look, I'm so fucking, I'm like, I'm so like horny. Yeah. But before I just jerk off and lay down, go to the gym first, then I can jack off or write some bars first and then you can jack off where yeah. I'm like, well, okay, I might be addicted to this shit, but at the very least, let me use it to <laughs> my use advantage. It. Yeah. yeah. It's so powerful because you have that, the creative energy. You have that. Use it as a reward. For me, I found out that like, if you can conquer that discipline, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything else is so much easier. Mm -hmm. The first time I've ever lost weight, <laughs> I stopped jacking off first. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Not heavy ass jizz you got there, <laughs> right? <laughs> Be Wait, being it yeah, it doesn't make sense, but <laughs> they got it. <laughs> being able to say no to that, right? I was able to say no to so much other shit. Right. No to the soda. Mm -hmm. No to the fries. You know what I'm saying? But it had to start with that because that's like the ultimate. Right. If I cannot do this, I don't need the fucking donuts. Right. <laughs> but that's but that is so Nah, I just do both. <laughs> <laughs> Same time. Hey. <laughs> while, while crying. Hell. While, while crying. While crying. <laughs> You're <Aww. disgusting. laughs> Nikki, how many of these conversations do you have to sit through? Oh, I normally participate in she them. She initiates, yeah. I normally do. See, because the, there's a huge difference between how men see masturbation versus how women do. Okay. Like, you hear, at, at me listening to this, it's a need. It's an everyday thing. Women don't necessarily fully comprehend what it is for you guys and why you need to do it all the time and it, it comes off like that's all they think about <laughs> it's like it, you know women think oh men only think about sex but there's something different in men like the the way you guys are built is different than the way we're we're built mm -hmm. and a lot of the times men don't understand how it is for us so women that get on birth control or like a lot to do with hormones they don't feel the same way that men do and it is a conversation that needs to happen more women aren't as horny and it's not their fault mm -hmm. and a lot of the times they don't know what's wrong with them so in a relationship if you're like all he's doing is this or oh he only wants to have sex all the time and you're not understanding why or what like your experience is y'all low-key had an addiction to it that's something that you really have to address and a lot of guys are addicted to it a lot of women don't talk <laughs> 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 you know a lot of women just don't discuss it as often because mm -hmm. it's when women want sex, they can go and get sex easily. and mm -hmm. easily. And if someone wants to take care of themselves, they do it. It's just not a conversation that happens as often. Yeah. But girls talk about sex just as much as men do. Mm -hmm. It is a conversation that they're having. Girls talk about their vibrators or what works for them, what doesn't work, what porn they watch, and you know how they are in their relationship. Mm -hmm. But the conversation of masturbation doesn't happen as often. In, yeah. just because it's accessibility we like there's a toy you can pull out something and if you want it it's there it's and if i want a body i can have a body if i want something else i can have something else but most women aren't as horny and a lot of the stress of their day-to-day -day mm -hmm. takes over so a lot of men use sex and masturbation as a release mm -hmm. uh, a lot of women ha have so much shit that they're thinking about constantly that mentally they're not there mm -hmm. so it's all connected that's why women are seen as more emotional right also we getting older man it's good for our prostate you know what i'm saying um well, i'm sorry what <laughs> yeah you know so um masturbation is is uh is good for your prostate gland because here's what i here's what i just learned Did you know that rick oh uh, no okay. so um it's actually good for you especially when you get older because the prostate um it, one of its functions is it creates uh pre-cum Mm -hmm. so that's like you know that's what the prostate does and i just learned about this because like, what the fuck is this shit anyway yeah. didn't know that um so yeah so <laughs> so <laughs> get that out of here prostate <laughs> so it's like um you, it kind of just uh it, it it helps you for when you get older and, and and prostate cancer is like an issue and shit like it just uh um regular masturbating is like recommended so not just a stress thing that they always say that it's good to do to 
Me not prostate. be so strict. Oh, look at that. Well, yeah, like I heard it. He's like, that's, for you. I didn't know why. That's his, that's his uh, excuse, and he's sticking to it. Right. <laughs> like, I'm doing it for the, for the prostate, you My y'all. prostate. <laughs> it's like, but babe, leave me alone. <laughs> I'll tell you something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I'll be tweet, I'll tweet the occasional, like, just like funny masturbation tweet, because like, you know, it's funny. You do talk about masturbation a lot. Um, I know. On, well, on Twitter, you know, it's, it's almost like, um, I just think it's funny to, to tweet about. Um, but like, people always hit me with the, uh, how are you still like? Are you still doing that when you're married? <laughs> I'm like, and 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 married dudes will be like, hell yeah. And, <laughs> but here's the thing about it too, is like, yeah, like uh, sex is beautiful, sex is great, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but like sometimes, man, you just need to jerk off. But that's yeah. he- that's healthy because there's gonna be days that she's not gonna yeah. want anything to do with it. Oh yeah, and yeah, trust me, she definitely has those days. <laughs> and like, but do you have those days? Um, okay, look, there, there are times that I'm just not in the mood. It happens. It happens. Uh, but I, I definitely have kind of conditioned myself to feel like, um, I, I should jerk off like every couple days. Uh, if, if like every two, like three days is pushing it for me. If I haven't busted nothing in like three days, I'm like, I'm like, I need to get this shit out of my system. Yeah, it's like an actual feeling. Like you, you feel it. Like, As hey, a, and I don't know, I'm empty. curious cause you were just talking about the difference between men and women. Mm. And there is something I feel that's a different in men considering like there's there's a higher amount of testosterone and that does something to us we yeah. hit we hit a point and even i we talked earlier and i was kind of like you know bashful about it but in reality i don't watch porn that much or masturbate that much intentionally mm-hmm. i want to all the time but i'm like i it just i feel like it's energy i can keep for myself to get some work done mm-hmm. and i've begun a practice of like like not doing that as much as i possibly can and, and redirecting the energy but there's a point when it hits you as a man the testosterone just gets so built up you literally start malfunctioning no oh, yeah mm. every woman that walks by you looks like yeah. a goddamn snack like every and you literally like you start getting yeah. antsy like i literally have to do yeah. something now like it, it's it's kind of weird yeah women do hit that point okay too uh a friend of mine hit me the other day she said bitch i don't know what the fuck's going on <laughs> but i want everything <laughs> she's like i want everything she goes I have never been because she's single, but she's also she's not dating and she's not looking. Mm-hmm. You know, we're in that boat of like not really interested, nor do we want to be giving out energy to people that we don't necessarily want to be around. But she was like, I don't even know what the fuck to do right now. She goes, nothing's working. <laughs> and because in order for most women to come, they have to mentally be connect. There's a connection that has to happen. We don't just done it, it doesn't work oh, that trust way trust me we know <laughs> it does not you we guys know romantic yeah it's a lot it's a, it's a very it's a very emotional thing but she straight up said she goes bitch it's we've hit boiling point <laughs> i may or may not make a poor decision please stop me yeah, it gets like that. Yeah. yeah so y'all better learn how to jack off man but she, <laughs> that but, saves us so many no times. but it, but when you when you crave physical contact Y'all can just get that nut off. It's done. You feel a release. But when you're, I mean, guys go through it too. When you're craving that physical intimacy and you've hit that level of it's not just about I need to get this release. It's about I miss this and now I'm going through the roof. Like it feels like it's too much. Women go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. It just is expressed differently because it's not as spoken about. Women don't talk about that as much. And if you talk about it, it's on a channel that most guys aren't watching. I, I may be different here. I don't think I've ever experienced that. The creating the intimacy thing? Yeah. Oh. Like, I've definitely had the horns going crazy. Right. But then I do it myself and I'm like, oh, I'm good. No, and and I was going to, I was going to say the same thing where um, I, I, I definitely, okay, look, I had a point where I was um, like college where I was hooking up a lot and I got to a point where I was like, I like random sex is fun, but it's not, I I miss intimate, like, you know, like love making. Right. Mm -hmm. But also um it's it was never craving intimacy to a boiling point right it was yeah. like if i'm craving anything after my nut <laughs> yeah it's it's not there anymore well, yeah. okay so, <laughs> okay, so, so, he's this- dri- so he's driving the car and he's pa- he's on full and he's passing the gas stations you don't need gas right you don't need gas you can pass all the gas stations because your tank is already full so imagine your tank is on empty but it's not just needing the gas anymore for some reason now the oil's out and you need all these other things to fix it to make the car run the tire's a yeah. little low. The, and so you just need a little tune up <laughs> I, I, I get it like yeah, yeah. No, i get okay. it i'm just saying it's never been that for me because it's been to the point where i'm like damn I would like to have some sex right now. And then I'll send a text. Mm. <laughs> but it's just too much going on. Yeah. And the reply is taking too long. You end up handling it yourself. I, and I think even, And then after you handle it, the reply comes and you're like, mm. you're, you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, 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 I don't know who that was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a part of it too, like, 
for some reason it just doesn't feel like enough. Have you ever have you ever done it and just felt like you were missing something yeah. after? No, 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 of course. Okay, okay and that, and that's what I'm saying. I think Rick, see Rick saying no. And then you guys say yes. I think he's saying. I think he he agrees with what you're saying, but it's just no, no, not I, on the I, same I got that. level. Everybody's it's different. Like you can like yearn for intimacy, um, and then, but I've but but like when you're in that mindset, it, it doesn't necessarily um, mingle together. You yeah. feel yeah. me? It's like heightened horns, thirst for intimacy. I can bust my nut. I might still be like, ah, fuck, this would have been great if but it you're, was but you're good. sweet love. Yeah, but I'm, you're good. But, yeah, okay. yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good at it. For, for a lot of people, especially that are withholding, they're not necessarily just craving to, to get off. Yeah. The, the other things that they're craving and they're willing to say no to. It's like, yeah. if I'm saying I don't want to give my body, I'm going to regret. It's almost like, if I go and do this, say you send the text mm -hmm. and you, you're like, fuck, I sent the text. Do, how am I going to feel after that? Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people are thinking like yeah. are thinking yeah. how am i going to feel after right. but not the satisfaction after it's did i make this choice with the right person i think you hit just a certain point yeah, oh. yeah that's, totally yeah. that's real yeah, yeah. that's yeah. very but, much so but but what i'm saying is okay so for me they're separate right sex yeah. isn't as important for me as it would seem the release is important though mm -hmm. okay. but i don't care how i get the release okay. right mm -hmm. i can spend a week with my girl yeah and not have to have sex mm -hmm. and be happy yeah. with her. Yeah. If she has something going on or something right. and she great. just can't. That's a relationship. I'm cool with that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if i horny and I want to have sex, I can handle it by myself and be just as good as I would okay. if right. I had the sex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, so, yeah they're, yeah, they're separate for me. Yeah. I, I get both. You know, people are different. For me, I, I, like, I finally gave myself permission to be okay with me in the, in the sense that I'm just not your average guy. Yeah. I'm very particular. Mm -hmm. And I crave connection. As you know, I've always been like a serial serial monogamous. You, yeah, you like, a loving ass dude. Man. I am a loving ass dude. And like I've always been in relationships, long term relationships, on the radar and even some off the radar. Uh, but I just have always been a relationship person. So I don't connect with the frivolousness of just hookup culture uh, like 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 some people. And there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've for myself, I had to learn. You know what? Because for a while, I was trying to fit in with the guys. Like I'm gonna mm -hmm. go out. I'm gonna smash. And my friends who know me well are like, "Nigga, no, you ain't." Like, <laughs> it's, it's really what. You like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're so you go smash, and then you gonna cook breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and now you stuck. You gonna end up dating. Her, so you're gonna, what are you doing? Exactly. And that's what, what happens. It's like, and then you are gonna call her, and you gonna ask yeah. if she's okay. It's just like, you but know. It's but it's good that everybody can have their own view of what yeah. sexuality is to them. Then you yeah. find someone that it resonates with them, and then it's cool. Yeah, my only hang up is for people that, for anyone, if you know what you want and who you are, then be that at all times and don't fake it. Yeah. Like for my guys who love to just go out and just smash, cool. Just fellas, please, if, you, if you're listening to this also, <laughs> make sure that if you go out for just a smash, that the girl is also out for just the same thing. They, right. they don't, mm, don't, out there. there's plenty, there's plenty for what everyone wants. If you want a relationship, there's people looking. If, yep. if you just want to smash and be left alone, there are women out there who want to do that too. Just mm -hmm. make sure, don't mislead people, don't hurt people. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've never been for the uh, saying misleading thing yeah. to potentially get the smash. You know, right, I always right, felt right. like, that. what's the point of that, yeah. you know? But... We can't uh, let the lady slide here. Yeah. Stop acting like you're down for just a smash when you come across a dude who's right. honest about it. Yeah. Mm. Because they do that shit all the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with that. My boy uh, <laughs> met this girl one time. Oh, man, this was so long ago. But he, she really, they hung out. They were hanging out for the day. She really, really wanted to have sex. But she was like, she was like, no, nah, but we can't. It's, it's the first day. I don't do that. But tomorrow we can have sex. <laughs> Everybody has these rules in their own head. It's crazy because there are really people that go and they have these lists mm -hmm, that they have mm -hmm. to check off. But right. for for them, did he wait a day? Yeah, they waited till the See? next day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but but, you gonna, you gonna wait? Well, you gonna wait? <laughs> but in her, if I was super hot. I wouldn't have waited. I would have been like, I would. I would if like, Rick was super oh, hot. Damn. He would just be the. I big don't. I don't have sex on the second day. <laughs> <laughs> it's now or never. It's now. <laughs> no. It would have been off the table at that point. Oh, damn. <laughs> she already said no. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Good thing we're not super hot. Yeah. Oh, man. If I was super hot, oh, my God. If I, if I was regular hot, oh, my God. <laughs> A whole problem. Man. Thank God for these personalities we got, boy. Damn. Boobs Shit. and personality. That's what I'm made of. You said what? Boobs? Boobs and, <laughs> boobs and personality. That's all you need, dog. That's it. Well, shit, man, what are you working on nowadays? 
Uh, right now, um, as I mentioned before, just the podcast, Superhuman Podcast, trying to be like you guys when I grow up. Superhuman uh, Podcast. Superhuman okay. Podcast. Um, and that, right, and that, and just working on my 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 my, my acting and writing and making the most of COVID right now because can't nobody go nowhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a little scared for this election, but that's that's another topic. But yeah, that's that's what I'm working on. Me. Oh, this election. I thought you said selection. The selection. Yeah. I was like, what's happening? What's happening? I was like, what do you what do you know about that? We don't know about. <laughs> Nothing. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a six two thing? <laughs> Oh God! You know what? And every time, you know, because of you, I now have like been very conscious over the years of noticing tall guys with no personality. <laughs> oh, they—they're the worst. Like, because I always say that, and it's true. And I'm thankful, according to me, like I'm tall, but I have a personality, yeah, and I'm know. and I'm funny. But when I when you pointed it out to me, it's something I had never heard anyone point out. <laughs> yeah. About my fellow tallies, and I was like, I started looking. I'm like, yo, these niggas really ain't got no personality. Yeah, I dated a six foot five brick. He was just mm-hmm, not much up there. And it's and it's heavy also. And I, you know, no, no, don't take it personally, no athletes. More. But a lot of the athletes, you know, I, I hear that from women about the athletes mostly. It's just like tall, talented, but then like you talk to them, and it's like there's nothing going on. See, but you so, have a personality because you used to have a big butt. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So, uh, yeah, I went in big man booties. <laughs> <laughs> Made you walk a little funny. <laughs> What do you mean? That gives you personality. Man. <laughs> he got a big butt. Is, he, he used to. That is top <laughs> top ten the strangest things I've heard in 2020. <laughs> I've heard a lot of conspiracy theory. <laughs> go, That's the strangest go, one. Go back. <laughs> Find you some full body alpha cap in here. <laughs> that is got a big man booty. <laughs> <laughs> that 30 pounds you lost was all oh, in the butt. Oh my God. That's his, I've never heard that in my life. I'm quote that's that's getting when this drops, that's getting quoted and putting on Twitter immediately. You Dash know. Ricky Shucks. So you saying you, you never got bullied for that? I don't guys get bullied for having a big ass? Okay, look. I, I've known a few. You know, I don't this is a weird convo, but <laughs> not yeah. I don't not I like don't, a big good ass. <laughs> Not like, not like, no, look. Oh, look at his ass. To, to what Rick is saying, I, I had a I had a homie in elementary school um, who had a high, big butt. There we go, high. And he got it. picked on for it. Yeah. yeah, until he grew into it. I don't think I have either. Like truth, truth, <laughs> yeah. truth be told, I don't I don't think I, I I've ever had much of that going on. So that's that's news to me. But that's Did funny. Did you just find out you had a fat ass? <laughs> no, I, had, not, it's had. had. Oh. Yeah. I know. I say have or had. You can't call it a fat ass. Because that's, oh, what is that's a good that's connotation. A good yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, wait. Are women that concerned with men's asses, by the way? Yeah, women love ass. Too. Why is that? What are y'all, what are y'all gonna just, do with that? You just squeeze it, and grab it, and love it. You don't be doing that. Okay. <laughs> they let you? You gonna tell me no? I would. Nope, I'm gonna say. I got a shitty ass. <laughs> 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 I had a nice one, man. I, I don't know. Bars. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean. We like ass too. Yeah. We like squeezing and grabbing things too. That's no, nah, you no, know, no. That's that's fair because um, on, in one of the Avengers movie, I forget which ones. Um, uh, in one of the, the Avengers, no, 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 no. Um, um, fucking Captain Planet. No, Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> Recycle. <laughs> Captain America was uh was boxing on his little intro scene to him, and it was from the back, and his butt was looking nice. Not gonna lie, <laughs> every everybody in the theater, dudes and girls, was like, "Oh damn, okay, <laughs> Captain Captain America." He's, yeah, <laughs> you strong, you stable. Hilarious. <laughs> I want one of them. And yeah, he's, and he's still the the weakest superhero. True. Mm. That's just me. Sorry. Oh, that's that's a, just me. Um, you I mean Captain America? You mean out of the whole squad, or I superheroes mean heroes? Period or Marvel? Mar like out of that squad, I think. Well, I mean, there's I mean, there's been new characters since the you know the earlier movies that have been added, like Black Widow and uh, right. the Hawkeye. Is it, is it Hawkeye? Ha- well, Hawkeye got to be the you you yeah. said you said yeah Hawkeye. I just I just have a vendetta against Captain America. I'm just gonna I'm just I just came here to air that out because because of the ass thing. No, just because I just. <laughs> It just he like don't his backstory. It, no, he just <laughs> <laughs> he just don't seem very super to me. Like, oh, he's really strong. I know a lot of strong people. Yeah, they but, give him his hero yeah. complex. Is pretty. They wrote him that way. He's, they have to write. They have to write him to look extra good. He's the captain, man. He's definitely okay. more. He's more powerful than Knight. Knight. I don't even know what those arrow dudes' name. Uh, Hawkeye. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Knight, Knight, Knight. Knight. Hawkeye. Okay. I don't know. Oh, well, that went left. That's a whole. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah, fuck. That's funny. Well, shit, man. 
Thanks for coming on the podcast, That's bro. a weird way to... <laughs> thinking about, like, Rick, how far back... Where's this video? <coughs> I don't know. Go search. Maybe, it's like, uh, I'm asking for a friend. Yeah. Maybe they don't exist. Maybe this is just from they, seeing you at, like, I mean, because you know. that's a strange way to bring it up. By the way, he... That was, I thought he knew. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> like, let's, did you let's, know? Let's, 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 let's give full transparency here. That's funny to me because uh, some of the girls I've dated have kind of jokingly you know, tease me like, oh, you got a little booty. You know, like you ain't got much of a booty. Huh. So, so the one person that tells me I do have a booty is <laughs> hey, Rick. I got you, dog. I got you. <laughs> Maybe it was the You gonna hit up your ex like, Rick told me my ass. <laughs> Remember you saying I had no ass? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Here's the clip. Rick said it. Ricky Shucks got my back. Literally. Fucking hilarious. It's a weird note to end on. Alpha but cakes. Alpha cakes. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. I'm going to be walking out of here backwards like, okay, guys, <laughs> see you later. I'm going to be like this. Where's it at? What, what's, what are we talking about? Pulling my shirt down and shit. <laughs> well, uh, where can we find you, bro? Uh, you can find me on on um, MySpace at Alpha Cat. <laughs> Black Planet at Gnome. Um, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Alpha Cat. And then also, I'd never use Snapchat. Black Planet's coming back, you know. Is it? I just saw on Twitter, they're like re rebranding and trying to form a whole new, like, Generation of uh, you know website is that owned by black people? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, sure, I hope so. <laughs> Definitely hope so. It's owned by Martha Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, shit. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the No Chaser Podcast. I'm Tim Shantaranxi. I'm Ricky Shuck. I'm Nikki Blades. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>